Hello everyone, we are here talking about Street Fighter V and so let's get let's get down right into it into the new announcement for a new character Rashid mm -hmm. so it was an interesting announcement because many didn't really expect to see Rashid many were expecting Cody <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so let's let's talk about about a little bit about Rashid so why did you choose a character from that part of the world uh, because it's a it's a pretty new thing for a Street Fighter franchise. Yeah, so Street Fighter is a very global franchise. All of our characters come through different regions throughout the world. Uh, the Middle East has a very strong community that's been growing, so we wanted to give them a character that that community can really get behind and is an honor to the region. Mm -hmm. You guys have a very friendly really friendly rivalry with, with Nanko Bandai, and they also have a new Arab character in, mm -hmm. in their... In their um, in their new in their franchise in Tekken, uh, do you think there has been something going on between this behind the scenes between uh, Mr. Ono and Mr. Te Mr. Harada? Uh, like, did they did they plan it together? <laughs> uh, I mean, they could. I do know that Ono-san and Harada-san are really good friends uh, in real life. Uh, they do discuss things back and forth. I don't know if that actually did take place. We could have just both independently come up with the same strategy. Um, I it is very apparent that that community is growing over time, so it would make sense that both of our companies would want to do something that is uh, an honor for that region. Okay. Um, the, P the PS4 version and the PC version are the only two versions announced. Mm -hmm. um, are they going to be like exclusive to PS4 forever? Correct. Yeah, it is a lifetime exclusive and it will be console exclusive on the PS4 and PC. Mm -hmm. uh, something that actually I was wondering. Um, that's that must have been a difficult decision because um, that's something. You, you, of course, you're, you're gaining a strong partner, mm -hmm. but on the other side, you are losing quite a quite quite a bit of player base because, of course, a lot of people play on Xbox. Mm -hmm. uh, was it a difficult decision or was it smooth sailing? Was it did it take a long time to get there? I mean, any decision of that caliber is going to be a difficult one to make, but I believe that Sony is the right partner for us because they share the same vision for the growth potential in the fighting game space. Mm -hmm. uh, this is so much more than just a co-marketing deal. Both of us are really um, pushing as hard as possible to make fighting games grow. Uh, one of the things that we really wanted to accomplish this time around was cross-platform play. That's mm -hmm. going to unite the community into a centralized player base for the mm -hmm. first time ever. Uh, so that was very integral with our strategy. Uh, and Sony is putting their best foot forward to ensure that the PlayStation 4 is the home of fighting games moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, the PS4 and PC version, uh, the PC4 and, PS4 and PC are very different machines. Mm -hmm. uh, so the PC, of course, I'm guessing is going to have quite some graphical options and whatnot. Uh, but it's probably going to be a problem if it runs at unlocked frame rate. So do you think it's going the frame rate is going to be unlocked or uh, on PC or is it going to be locked to 60 frames like the PS4? Uh, there will need to be parity between the two platforms. Since we do have cross-platform play, we can't allow for either platform to have an advantage over the other one. Uh, so the game is going to come out simultaneously on PS4 and PC, mm -hmm. uh, as well as any post-launch content will also drop at the same time. There should be parity between the platforms. Okay. Um, something that uh, that's actually pretty interesting, considering that you guys have to deal with a lot of different controllers, because having PC and PS4 playing together uh, means that you're gonna have fighting sticks, even maybe people playing with a keyboard, I don't know uh, if it's actually possible to play with a keyboard. Uh, is it possible? Uh, I actually don't know that huh? off the top of my head. Uh, there's a good possibility, but I, I would need to see it myself first before I I'm not sure how, how someone can really play with a keyboard, but you know, I, there, there are there are people that can do it. I have I have seen previous fighting games working on a keyboard, so that could be an option. Uh huh. Um, so basically, uh, have you guys done anything to like equalize the controllers or to make the performance of the controllers similar or to make things like a little easier, maybe with a normal controller compared to a fighting sticks, so there is a little bit more equality between diff the use of different controllers? So I, I think that the two main peripherals are either a pad or a stick. Um, neither is superior to the other one. It just base, is based off of your play style, mm -hmm. and both of those should be uh, supported on both of the platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think there should be parity between peripherals uh, that are at uh, player's disposal. Something that actually was quite interesting to me was the choice of uh, Unreal Engine as the engine for the game. The result was is absolutely fantastic, but I was actually kind of 
wondering uh, why you guys didn't just go with your internal engine at your development, uh, developing the Pantheray and just uh, do yeah. the Unreal. So I think it's just a development decision. Unreal uh, Engine 4 has a lot of great capabilities with it, and the team uh, really wanted to explore utilizing that. Mm -hmm. And I think when all is said and done, the game has come out, uh, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, the graphics are incredible, and I think that that partnership with Unreal Engine 4 is going to be a very good one. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking about graphics, well, not exactly graphics, graphics but animation. Uh, the animation in the game are absolutely fantastic. I love them. Thank you. Um, are they made like in motion capture or they are they keyframe? Because they they actually look keyframe, keyframe by hand to me. Uh, I, I do know that there is motion capture that is done. I don't know the specifics on how they exactly do their animations. Mm -hmm. I do know that the game has been rebuilt from the ground up, so we're not reusing any animations from previous games. Not even uh, one. Uh, to my knowledge, it's completely new. Mm -hmm. uh, so we wanted each character to have kind of a fresh new take with them. So some, mm -hmm. some moves are similar to other moves in Street Fighter. Yeah, of course. Uh, but all in all, the game is brand new and fresh. Yeah, it definitely looks brand new to me. Like looking at, look if you look at it from like far away, from like maybe on YouTube, it can it can seem to have some similarities to four. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it on a screen, it looks really really different. Is yeah. it something that you did like on purpose? Like you did, you purposely tried to detach yourself themselves uh, yourselves from uh, the graphical style of Street Fighter Four, like or you or it just was something that happened because of the artist point of view. Well, I mean, every Street Fighter game is going to have a different visual aesthetic to it, uh, so. I, I think they went for a, for a style that uh, is similar to what Street Fighter is really known for, but it, it's colorful and bright, vibrant and is brought to life in a new way. Mm -hmm. Let's get into something a little, uh, <laughs> a little hardball. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you guys have been like, criticized very, very harshly by the community because of your like, pol pol uh, policy of re-releasing games over and over. Mm -hmm. like, Street Fighter, Street Fighter, Super Street Fighter, and you know all the all the various various versions, and one had to buy them again to yeah. get the updated version. This time you changed this policy. Yes, we did. And uh, you changed it quite radically. Mm -hmm. You can actually basically buy the basic game, and if you if you keep playing it, you can just basically get all the DLC for free, right? Yeah. Uh, so is there um, what's the what's the philosophy behind the decision? First of all. So, well, I mean, fighting games are very unique in the fact that when players play these games, a lot of them, this is their hobby. They play it for many years to come. Uh, they want to compete. And the, our old business model was kind of necessary for that time frame. So it's important that we continue to produce new content so that the community can continue to grow. Mm -hmm. How we handled that in the past was to put together bundle packs. Uh, we'd rebalance the game, add, a, add some new characters, and then sell it for a new cost. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's been pretty standard throughout the industry. Yes. Um, but I believe that that model is a little outdated at this point. Uh, so this time around, like Street Fighter V is a game that learns uh, from all of its predecessors, both in terms of gameplay design and how we're handling things from a business level. Uh, and this time around, we wanted a system that's going to reward players for the more that they play. So some of the key changes on how we're switching things around, this is the only disc you're ever going to need to own. Mm -hmm. You can upgrade to all of the content from that original purchase. Mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, all balance adjustments are going to be made available free of charge throughout the product's lifespan. Uh, so before, if you were to take a break for one to two years and wanted to come back, you'd get stuck with an upgrade charge, and yeah. nobody likes that. So now, uh, if you take a break and come back, you can still have access to the characters that you own, playing in the largest player pool, so that should work for everybody's best interest. Um, but most importantly, the more you play the game, you get more in-game currency, and you can use that to earn post-launch content free of charge. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you want to speed that process up, you can purchase it with real, uh, real money, uh, but for our dedicated players, one of our rules we have, or our design philosophy, is that anything that can affect the outcome of a match, that needs to be earnable with in-game currency. So if you're dedicated to the game, you constantly play, those players are going to be rewarded for the first time ever. Yeah, that's something I'm guessing you guys learned a little bit from your experience of free-to-play games, since Capcom is dabbling quite a lot on free-to-play games, especially in, in Asian Japan, mm -hmm. uh, that you, can, you, you get all the content for for free if you want to grind for it let's say yeah and uh, but you can speed up your experience Correct. so if that's something you you actually learn from your experience in free-to-play games yeah or it's just an industry trend right yeah. now uh so 
it, it isn't a free-to-play game because it is a disc-based purchase yeah, to course. begin with, but post-launch it functions very similarly. So you can get in-game currency the more that you play, and that kind of allows players to have a better incentive for playing the game for a longer period of time, mm -hmm. and they can get content for the for free, which everybody likes free content. <laughs> that's yeah. nice. So there is nothing that's going to come post-launch that is affects the, the gameplay that mm -hmm. is going to be that people can only pay to get. Correct. Yeah. That's very nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there'll be cosmetic things and things that don't affect it. Um, but we really want to be respectful towards the people that just mm -hmm. want the gameplay content and allow them to be rewarded with that if they stay dedicated. Uh, to the will the, the, the costumes and stuff like that will only be uh, purchase purchasable with like real money or you will also be able to grind for them in the game? So I think there's probably going to be a mixture. I don't mm -hmm. believe our plans are 100% formalized on that just mm -hmm. yet. Uh, but there should be a mixture of paid or earned uh, cosmetic content as well. Okay, so you will be able to get some costumes. Yeah. That, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about gameplay a little bit. Yeah. Um, what's, according to you, the biggest difference between Street Fighter, the latest, the latest version of Street Fighter 4, and Street Fighter 5? What's, what's going to really surprise people that have maybe gone a little dark on the internet and uh, and didn't and didn't didn't read the news, let's say. Yeah. So uh, the new core system mechanic, uh, the variable system, is what really separates Street Fighter from its predecessors. And what's really cool about the variable system is it allows every character to have a very unique and individualized play style. Mm -hmm. uh, so every character has a V skill and a V trigger. Mm -hmm. uh, what a V skill is is it's a new move uh, that adds an extra level of utility to your character. So it could be a new movement option, a parry. Um, or a way of dealing with projectiles. The more effectively you use your V skill, then it builds up your variable meter. Uh, when you have a full variable gauge, then you can execute your V trigger, and that really unleashes your character's true potential. Um, when, we, when designing the variable triggers, we wanted to look at the elements that the characters were really known for. Uh, so to give a good example, like a character like Ryu is known for his fireball game. Uh, so when he activates his V trigger, he goes into dungeon mode, which gives him new projectile options. So he can now mix up the timing when he throws projectiles, charge them up. If you do a fully charged Hadouken, it's going to break your opponent's guard. Uh, and that really synergizes with that character's style. A uh, character like Chun-Li is known for uh, her multi-hit attacks. So when you activate your variable trigger, then all of her normal moves now have multi-hit properties. Uh, so it's just a way of taking it, taking what the character's roots are and bring it, bringing it to life in a new way. And it also adds a lot of different variety. Um, so one example I like to use, like the core gameplay mechanic for Third Strike was a parry. Mm -hmm. um, now that whole core gameplay mechanic just exists in the game as Ryu's V skill. So mm -hmm. All the other characters have unique V-Skills and V-Triggers that can open up uh, completely new gameplay possibilities. So this game is going to have far more variety than any other Street Fighter we've done today. Mm -hmm. uh, I've noticed that uh, the, the characters, like the characters I've tried, have, their, their moves are a little bit more similar between each other, and, I mean in execution, not in effect, mm -hmm. than they were in the past. Is that correct? Uh, I, so I, I believe there's some... Uh, realism to that statement, yeah. Yeah, is is that intentional to make it maybe maybe making it a little easier for people to jump between characters instead instead of always using the same one? Yeah, definitely. The well, I mean, striking that balance between making sure that the game is accessible to new players yet is still very very deep, so that it uh, fulfills the desire of our competitive community is one of the most. Uh, important debates that we have internally and I think we struck a very very good balance this time around. Um, the variable system is very easy to execute even if you've never played Street Fighter before. Mm -hmm. uh, a V skill is just medium punch and medium kick. A V trigger is just heavy punch and heavy kick. Yet there still are uh, more complex things to do in the game like double fireball motions to execute a critical art. Uh, so we want to make sure that every player, no matter what your skill level, has tools at their disposal that they can use, mm -hmm. uh, yet have a very deep uh, deep gameplay design that's going to fulfill the desires of our competitors. Community. Well, in the end, the, 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 real, the real difference between a pro player and a bad player mm -hmm. <laughs> is mostly the timing, not really the execution of the various yeah. half moons and whatnot, right? Yeah, Street Fighter is supposed to be a game um, that's about outthinking your opponent. It's mm -hmm. not just about physical dexterity and execution, but it's more about how you approach the match, how you break down your opponent, and really outthinking them. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's what Street Fighter V is all about. 
Uh, in Street Fighter 4, there are a lot of options that if you had uh, very good execution like FADCs, mm -hmm. uh, you could use that to keep yourself safe. So you could throw out an uppercut, but you could still cancel out of that to keep your... Uh, keep your character from being punished. This time around, we don't have things like that. So uh, if you make a guess, you gotta stick with it. If you guess wrong, you're gonna get punished. If you <laughs> guess right, you're gonna beat your opponent down. And that's what Street Fighter is all about. Um, so you told me about the, your uh, esports strategy mm -hmm. uh, that is going to involve both PC and PS4. Tell me more, a little bit more about this and how the two platforms are going to interact uh, online and maybe even offline. I mean, the, in the in the actual tournaments uh, scene. Yeah. So the Capcom Pro Tour is our premier league destination for competitive Street Fighter. We're currently in our uh, second season mm -hmm. uh, and we're growing at a massive rate. Uh, the PlayStation 4 is going to be our platform of choice for the Capcom Pro Tour. Uh, but all in all, Capcom is really doubling down and trying to put together a very strong infrastructure that gives players a real incentive for playing. Uh, some of the cool things that we're doing, so we've basically doubled in size from the previous year. There's 32 spots up for grabs at the Capcom Cup. Um, we wanted to make sure that it's truly a globally minded league, so we're focusing on the various regions and making sure that all of them have the same number of ranking points that are available and the same number of premier tournaments to compete in. Mm -hmm. um, and most importantly, we've boosted our prize pools by a half million dollars this year. This That's more, nice. <laughs> yeah, it's more money than the fighting game scene has ever seen. Um, this is going to be the first year at Capcom Cup that a fighting game player walks away with a six-figure paycheck from a single single win. Uh, so very exciting times, and we're just getting started. So Street Fighter V is our first Street Fighter game that was really designed with esports in mind. Uh, so we'll have some exciting announcements at a later date as to how that's going to synergize with the game itself. Perfect. Well, thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, I can't wait to actually actually play the game and demonstrate how much I suck at it. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> as you probably noticed and <laughs> while we're testing it. You gotta start somewhere, man. Yeah. As long as you're having fun, then you're having a good time. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.